Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. About two weeks ago, Ubiquity released a new firmware update for Unify Access. That was Unify Access Application 1.5.9. And in this update, they totally redesigned the Access Controller. So in this video, we're gonna take a look at the new Access Controller. I'm gonna adopt an Access Hub and a UA Pro, and then we'll add some users into our Access. If you'd like to support my channel, the best way to do so is to hit the subscribe button. If you'd like to hire me for network consulting, visit www.mactelecomnetworks.com. And I also have affiliate links down in the description below. All right, the first thing we need to do is set up our Unify Access. I didn't have it on this UDMSE, so we're going to press set up. We're going to agree to the end user license, and then we're going to press start. It's saying that no devices were detected, and that's because I created a separate network for my Unify Access. And since these aren't on the default network, it's not gonna show up any of our Access hubs or our Access readers. So I'm gonna press on this Network Settings tab. And from here, we could select the network that the Unify Access is sitting on. So I'll hit the drop down and we'll scroll down to Access, and then we'll press Save. Now we can press Try Again. Now that our Access Network is selected, we could see the Access Hub and we could see the Access Reader Pro. And this is called Main Door. It's on the first floor and this is gonna be an entryway and then we'll press Next. So now it's asking us to register some Unify Access cards and we can use different NFC cards if we'd like, but I'm just gonna use the ones that came with the starter kit. I have my UA Pro in front of me. I'm just gonna put one of the cards on the screen and it will take about five seconds. And now you could hear that going off. So the card has been detected and I'm gonna press next. After we do this, we could add as many users as we'd like. Also, you don't need to register any cards at this step as we don't even have any users in the database. And then I'm gonna press next. Now in step three, this is new. It says configure unlock recording. So specify how entries and exits should be recorded. So disable unlock recordings or we want video and audio or video only video and audio and then we could specify what duration and i'm going to put it to 10 seconds and press done to be able to do the recordings you must have a hard drive in your udm pro or your udm se so right off the bat we could tell that this dashboard looks different we have our most active locations we have our most active users and then we have locations i only have the one hub plugged in so we're only going to see the main door if we click on the main door, you could see no sensors installed. We could also see this capture and we could see the unlock button. Let's press on the capture. We could see the camera is currently pointed at my coffee and we could unlock this if there was someone at the door. So I'll click unlock and you could hear that go off and the door would be unlocked if we had to strike connected. You could also use the microphone and you could hear off the speaker. I'm not gonna do that because we would get some feedback. Now we see that some things have been logged. We have our most active location, which is our main door, and we could see the most active user, which is myself. Another thing that we could see on the main dashboard is the active credentials. So we've been using just a card, but it would show if you're using a pin and that would be in the green. We could also see the recent activity which we unlocked it by the main door. Another thing that's changed within Unify Access is the locations and devices section has been integrated together. So we're currently on the device page and we can see my main door. But at the top here, we have locations for hubs, readers, and then we have our groups. I don't have any groups created, but if we click on our reader, it will show us what readers are connected. You could also show all or you could create a group and then we could filter. For the filter options, we show all devices. If we want, we could look at the UA Hub Elevator, the UA Hub, UA Pro, UA Lite, and then the UA Display. I'm not 100% what the UA Display is. Maybe that's something new. I haven't heard of it. If you know what that is, please leave it in the comments below. We could also see different status updates. So we have online, we have offline, we have update available, which there is an update for my main door. Next, we have our users. And that initial card that I activated with the Reader Pro actually went to my user, Cody McCallum, because this user was in my UDM SE. To add a user, we just go to the right-hand corner, click Add User, and then we put in all the credentials, add the card, add the pin, as well as the group that we want it to be in and the policy. Next, we have our system log, which is gonna show us our critical updates, the door opening and who opened the door. We have our updates, we have our device events, and then we have our admin activities. So now to get to our policies, we need to go into our settings wheel. So we'll click on the settings wheel and we could see policies here. So we could create different policies if we'd like. And then we have our security tab. Under security, we have our emergency and we could either have an off, lockdown, or evacuation. One good change that Ubiquity made, you used to have to enter in your password to do either the lockdown 
or the evacuation, which if you're in an emergency, you're not going to want to put your password in. So now you could click on say lockdown and then you could activate the lockdown which will lock all your doors. If you're not using any third-party cards and you want to be more secure, we could say unify access credentials only so we could only use the unify cards. And then we have our different pin options. We have four digits, six digits, or eight digits. And unify access application 1.5.9 also introduces simple pin. And what is simple pin? When enabled, pins could sequentially or repeat numbers. So one, two, three, four, five, six, or all zeros if you'd like. I probably will never have this turned on, but it's good to be able to have an option for it. Now, if we take a look under our system, we have our time format, and then we could change the door unlock recording if we want to change it to something else that we didn't initially set it up for. We also have our recording retention, and then we have our configuration file, which we could download, and we have advanced, which we could do our entry greeting, we could do our exit greeting, and we could also change the network that our Unify Access is running on. If you want to change the interface back to the legacy mode, we could do that here just by clicking on legacy and then applying the changes. So that's going to be it for this video on the new Unify Access application 1.5.9. I really do like this new GUI in Unify Access. I think it's going to be easier to manage for most people. Most of my customers who are on Unify Access are now using UID as they're under the three door limit and they could unlock the doors with their phone. If you have any questions about this video, please leave it in the comments below. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.